Hello, my favorite English language learners. It is your favorite English teacher here, Amy Joy. And in today's video, I am going to share with you seven mistakes that my students make when sending me emails. The first mistake I see students make is not including a subject line in their email. For example, Tuesday's absence. As an instructor, it's important that I am easily able to know what your email is about in case it is time sensitive. For example, I might respond to an email about office hours today before I respond to an email about a question about an assignment that's due in a few weeks. Also, it is just easier to go through my inbox and know what your email is about. So a subject line does not have to be long and it does not need to be a complete sentence. In fact, it should be short and to the point. For example, question regarding our exam or office hours appointment or letter of recommendation request, question about my grade or internship opportunities. Now, the second mistake I see my students make is using an inappropriate greeting and introduction. I have had many students use the word, hey, to begin their email. Hey is super informal. And even though American professors might be more casual with their students, this is very informal and not appropriate when talking to a professor. When writing an email in English, you want to say, dear professor, plus their last name, or hi professor and their last name, followed by a comma. Unless your professor has told you specifically to use their first name, it is always more respectful to use their last name. Also, make sure that you check that you spell your professor's name correctly. You would be surprised at how many students spell my name wrong, and that is not a good first impression to make in your email. And besides the inappropriate greeting, I also see students using an inappropriate introduction. I see so many students begin their emails by saying, I am Kate, or I am and their first name. Now this is kind of a grammar thing, but when writing an email or introducing yourself, we actually use the phrase, this is plus your name. And we use this phrase when you already have met your instructor. If you have not met your instructor and you are introducing yourself for the first time, you want to say, my name is Kate and I am interested in taking your course or whatever the email is about. So if you've already met the professor, introduce yourself by saying, this is Kate, this is plus your first name. And if you don't know the instructor, you can introduce yourself by saying, my name is Kate. Now, after this phrase, you want to identify yourself. So for example, dear Professor Smith, this is Kate Wang from your English 140 class on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon. You want to include specific details that identify yourself. For example, your first and last name, the class you are taking with that professor, the time that class occurs, and even maybe your student ID number. Now, after introducing yourself, you do not always need to repeat this information if you are talking back and forth in a long thread, but in the first email, it is important to include these details. And moving on to mistake number three, when trying to schedule an appointment with me, my students forget to include time frames that they are available. For example, Dear Professor Smith, this is Kate Wang from your English 140 class on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon. I would like to schedule an appointment with you to discuss some questions about the homework. Thanks, Kate. Now this is not totally wrong, this is okay, but it is much better to include the times that you are available so that your professor can begin to make the appointment more quickly. So a better email would include this sentence. I am free this week on Tuesday from 1 to 4 p.m. and Thursday from 9 to 3 p.m. If these times do not work for you, could you tell me some times that would be more convenient? By offering these time frames, you are getting to the point and letting your instructor pick the time that works best for them. Okay, and mistake number four, this one actually makes me laugh sometimes and it can be quite funny, but also a little bit awkward. And this mistake 
is giving TMI when explaining your absence. TMI is short for too much information. You would not believe the amount of emails that I get talking about throwing up, diarrhea, period cramps, all of these kinds of things that are quite personal and your instructors actually don't need to know the details or the extent to which you are sick. So I understand why my students would say this. They want to prove to me, they want to really let me know that they were so sick that they could not come to class. However, this information is a little too personal and as your instructor, I don't want to imagine you throwing up or on the toilet. So if you tell me you are sick, I will believe you. Now, some instructors might require you to bring a note from the doctor and you can just explain that you might not have a doctor's note because you were too sick to go to the doctor, but that's okay. You do not need to tell us about all of the things that came out of your body yesterday because we do not want to know. Now, some more appropriate ways to describe that you were sick, you could probably say, I had a migraine or I felt nauseous or I had a fever, or I had a really bad cold, or even I went to the doctor. But telling us some of those gross details really is unnecessary. And before I move on to the next mistake, I want to remind you to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have learned something new or gotten any value from this video so far. I work super hard on these and I would really appreciate your support, so thank you. Okay, and mistake number five is a big one. And this is using an inappropriate tone, being demanding, or entitled. The word entitled means that you feel like you deserve something. So let's take a look at this part of Kate's email. She says, I just saw my final grade and noticed I got an 89% in the class. I really need to keep my GPA high so I can get into a good grad school. Could you raise my grade for me? I tried really hard in this class and I think I deserve it. Now, as an instructor, I have received so many emails from students asking me to raise their grades. Now, to be honest, this is a very inappropriate request. So if you are going to ask your instructor to change your grade, you need to be very humble and understanding if they say no. So a better email would look like this. I just saw my final grade and noticed that I got an 89% in the class. I would really like to try and get a 90% and I was wondering if there were any opportunities to improve my grade. I understand if not and I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for a great semester. So even though asking to raise your grade is a little bit inappropriate, you can at least ask in a humble, kind, and respectful manner. And your teacher will be much more likely to respond favorably if you use the proper tone. When my students write to me feeling entitled and telling me what they think I should do, this makes me have a really bad impression of them and not want to change their grade at all. So some phrases to sound polite with your instructor include, I was just wondering or curious. Would you possibly consider? Could you please let me know? I would like to try. I understand and I really appreciate. By using language like this, you communicate a very respectful and humble tone and this is what your professor wants to hear when you are making a request. And mistake number six, asking questions that you can answer yourself. For example, let's look at Kate's email. She says, I would like to make an appointment with you to discuss my paper. When are your office hours? Or another example, could you tell me when our final paper is due? Now these questions about office hours and due dates can usually be found in your syllabus, on your course website, or even by asking a classmate. So before you ask your professor a question, make sure you put a lot of effort into finding the answers yourself. When students ask me questions that they can easily find the answers to themselves, that makes me think they are a little lazy and kind of wasting my time. So again, before asking your professor a question, make sure you check the syllabus, check the assignment, and ask classmates before you write an email. 
Now, if you do all those things and you still have a question or you can't find the answer, then when you email your professor, show that you already did some of the work to find it. For example, I would like to make an appointment with you to discuss my paper. I checked the syllabus and asked a classmate, but I cannot find when your office hours are. Could you please let me know? This type of email shows that you did your homework. You tried your best to find the answer. You took the initiative, but you still have a question. By mentioning all the work that you have done to find your answer, it lets me know that you are not wasting my time and you have already tried yourself. And our last mistake is using no or using an inappropriate closing. I know a lot of us use our phones to send emails and those come with an automatic signature, but I have a lot of students from other countries with different alphabets and sometimes they sign their name in characters that I cannot understand. So instead of using the automatic signature from your phone, make sure you end your email with best, kindly, sincerely, thank you, or thanks again, and then a comma and your first and last name. All right, well, there you have it. Seven mistakes that my students make when writing emails. And if you learned anything new in this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to my channel, and click that notification bell so that YouTube will update you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new, and I will see you next time.